Welcome back to my Mega Mama Kitchen, friends. Today, so I've got my big batch cooking list. Of course, we're not doing everything on this list today, but I like to keep a nice ongoing project list. So today, we're gonna jump in, doing a whole lot, with a bunch of sourdough discard that I've been collected in my refrigerator to do several sourdough discard projects. Now, my plan, the, the Mega Mama plan here with this, is we will be doing sourdough discard pancakes, but a portion of those pancakes will be breakfast for dinner tonight because that's the kind of mama I am. We will also hold back some pancakes for breakfast tomorrow, but then the rest, if we get as many as I'm hoping that we're gonna get, the rest will go in the freezer to get us many sourdough pancake freezer meals for many breakfasts coming up, and I'll thank myself later. I also want to do sourdough discard bagels. I'm excited, let's do bagels. I will save a portion in my refrigerator. The kids, the family will use those over a few days. But then the plan, the plan is we're going to get a bunch in the freezer also for freezer bagels because we'll need them. And then the next recipe I wanna do is with sourdough starter, I wanna do a huge, super mega massive batch of sourdough English muffins. I did sourdough English muffins one other time already and my large family table community members, that video was up for them several weeks ago. And in that batch, I did a times three batch. So. Will I be doing a times five batch, a times 10 batch? I don't know. The, the kitchen and the cooking will tell us once we get going. But we're gonna do a super mega massive batch of sourdough English muffins. Also, I'll save a dozen or two dozen in the refrigerator for meals coming up for this week. But the whole goal is to get a bunch of homemade from scratch sourdough English muffins in my freezer because I got a lot of people to feed all the time. And then from there, well, I'm going to get yogurt going. I always get go yogurt going, so we'll get a gallon of yogurt. My only little hiccup with the yogurt is, last time I made a gallon of yogurt, we didn't save back a couple spoonfuls to get the next gallon going. So hello, Walmart pickup. That's my one Walmart pickup situation here. I put in for just one thing of organic Greek yogurt, and we will use that as our starter for this next batch, and then Note to self, we need to put back a couple spoonfuls every time. I've been doing two to three gallons a week of homemade Greek yogurt. It's still not enough. I basically feel like I need a gallon a day, but we've been doing well holding back enough. We just, we just missed it this last time, but that's okay. We'll get a little bit and get rolling again. And then from there, of course, I've got a big enough list to pull ideas from. If we get all that done, I'll be excited. And if we get even more done, that is bonus points. So let's get big batch cooking, freezer meal cooking, mega mama cooking, cooking up all the things. And then another thing we really should prep today is all our sourdough loaves for the coming week, which would be 10 to 15 probably. Although we're doing other bread, so maybe I'll be safe with 10 because the family will take English muffins and toast them and they're gonna just love the bagels. But still to be on the safe side, I should prep 10 loaves. Also, you'll hear chopping and such. I've got a teen helping me today, getting uh, probably a bushel of cherries pitted and ready to go with those new little cherry pitter things I got on Amazon. I got two of them. And then a bushel of peaches. In a few days, I'm gonna do a bunch of cherry jam and a bunch of peach jam with the Pomona's pectin. And I'm also gonna work on big batch zucchini bread. I'm doing a sourdough zucchini bread, but not today. But the prep of that fruit is happening today while we're working on all these other projects. And so I have my sourdough discard out. It looks like milk, ha ha. But I have, reason I'm setting it out, my starter from yesterday um, I know it's gonna it's got some discard we're gonna go ahead and add to this and we're gonna feed it good things but before that gets going I'm gonna go ahead and put 
put this yogurt through its first cycle in the Instant Pot. Ready to go, it's just two of these in an hour, but not quite an hour, yeah. It's almost four now. At six, we have our little grocery pickup order for the yogurt, and that'll be perfect because once this does its thing for about an hour, and then it takes it an hour or so to cool, then I stir in the yogurt, and then I let it do a longer overnight yogurt cycle is what it'll end up being uh, for about eight to 10 hours. And mamas, you will be so excited to know that my brand new, because I know you've been with me through this whole journey, my brand new successful business mama, YouTuber extraordinaire course has launched. Yay. It is available right now through July 31st for a super, super mega discounted price to my very first enrollees in this brand new course. And the goal of YouTuber Extraordinaire is for me to take all my years of one of my very favorite topics, YouTube, and grow it on YouTube, for me to take all this knowledge and to help mamas get going on their very own successful YouTube journeys. In addition to the course and the course content, there's going to be six exclusive live group coaching calls with me over the duration of the course and so very mega much more. So click the first link in the description below and join YouTuber Extraordinaire to get going with all your YouTube hopes and dreams. Yay. All right, so we're gonna discard some more of this sourdough. Again, use it for our cooking purposes. And then we'll feed this, and a little later we'll use this for our bread. And lots of viewers have asked me why I make so much sourdough starter and why I use and make and produce so much sourdough discard. And just the quick answer is I need a lot. I need a lot of sourdough starter for projects that require starter and I need a lot of discard for projects that require discard plus pouring off the discard every day. Uh, it's dual purpose. It helps keep my starter happy and I know the discard can be saved in my refrigerator for weeks and weeks, if need be, for many fantastic recipes that I can use discard with. So I did two cups of flour, and I'm doing two cups of water. Lisa has told me that I cannot overfeed it, so that's good. <laughs> and this will allow me to get a lot of good, living, active starter ready to go. Uh, it'll be ready here just in a few hours to use. So. We'll feed it now. We've got we've got quite the job of discard sourdough pancakes and bagels ahead of us. So we'll get back to using this active starter and getting bread going for the week a little bit. And yay, I finally got my Danish whisk. I got a two pack of those on Amazon. They are linked also over on my Amazon shop. If anyone's going to ask me for that link, I do have those linked, but boy, they have made a big difference in stirring my sourdough starter and just with the everyday baking that I'm mega mama doing here. I did get more, uh, I think I got two or three of those lodge griddles. I've had the one that I shared with you that I've been cooking on since the farmhouse, even on the glass flat top stove. I know you're not supposed to, but I, I done did it, I did. That seems to work the best on this stove. This thing, I'll use it, it's okay, but still the center part, well, we'll test it. We'll test it and see. I felt like comparison-wise, you know, this piece was like $250. I felt like comparison wise, the $49 Lodge flat top griddles that just sit right on top, I don't even have to remove these grates. I knew I could buy three more of those and still save $100 from buying another one of those. This is not the one that came with the stove. The one that came with it has the grill, the grill portion and the flat top portion, when you flip it over, there's not enough air for the flame. So I don't know what Z-Line, I don't know what their design process was with that. I bought another one that had good reviews for the flat top, but 
for the price, I didn't want to buy another one of those, but I need, I need another one of those for this kind of cooking. So, I'm not putting too many things away because we'll be using those coming up. That mega mama pot has been good to me. And this is not mess from cooking on it. This is just some mess from people cooking eggs and pans beside it and those kind of things. And you see, this one has the grill on the other side too. It's just, it's not super practical um, for us to grill on this. It's like for four chicken breast. You know, I need the bigger cooking space. So the flat top side, I could do things on. So for the discard pancakes, I'm doing coconut oil as the oil. Now, I've done, done a whole lot of pancakes in my Mega Mama time. Oh, but I don't have, um, well, I got a cup over here somewhere, I think. What is that, fourth of a cup? Okay, we'll do that twice. Mama's made some pancakes. And in my sourdough school that I've been going through, I've made Lisa's sourdough pancakes. Now, as far as using sourdough discard, I have read a lot of different recipes out there. Most of them usually use uh, buttermilk or milk. So this is what last week I got to play in with doing my own version of a sourdough discard recipe because I was out of milk and I didn't have any buttermilk. I did have frozen milk, but when you're using frozen milk, if that's your milk, you gotta think ahead for that. And if I, you know, I had discard, I wanted to make the pancakes and I didn't have the two days for the milk to defrost for me to make pancakes that morning. So this is the biggest batch I have cooked up with the recipe so far. So you can see recipe development in the works, but I'm thinking we might do my big batch twice because this uses eight cups of sourdough discard and eight eggs. But again, I'm trying to have enough for dinner tonight, breakfast tomorrow, and no, no one is not, no one's gonna mind pancakes in the morning. I think Travis is doing bacon in the morning too to go with him. And then I need enough for pancakes in the freezer for many meals in the future. So, but I am using coconut oil. So this is half a cup, well this is a fourth of a cup that I'm measuring it out in, so I didn't have to leave you walk across my kitchen to get a different measuring cup there. So two fourths, one half, woo, right on the counter. You can use your extra coconut oil for hand lotion too. And I'm just gonna put this in the microwave for 20 or 30 seconds to let that melt down. And we'll go from there. Okay, also, um, what I did last time, excuse me, my coconut oil manicure here. What I did last time is I mixed in the hooch into the discard. I could tell though by a couple reviews from a few folks that it was a little too strong, even though everyone's been loving the sourdough. So today I'm just gonna pour the hooch off into our barnyard bucket that goes to our animals. Um, at least for, let's see, this, these two are new discard from today, so I don't want to use these up first. I'll probably put those in the refrigerator, and I'll pour off for one of these. I'm not sure how, how far, how deep and wide we will go and this up, but it's good in the refrigerator and doesn't have to be fed for a bit, but these have been in the refrigerator the longest, so these will go in the refrigerator now these up first. So again, for many things, I have stirred the hooch back up. No one knew any different, but pancakes, I'm not going to do that this time. I'm going to try pouring it off. And you may still hear some congestion in my voiceover, my future voiceover voice, but we are definitely working through the respiratory stuff we've had going on that you're going to continue to see evidence of in this video and my upcoming videos. Actually, I'm okay in this video, but boy, wait until you see my next video. But yeah, lots of adventures coming up, and that's okay. Boy, cooking ahead, having huge cooking marathon days, since I do feed 11 people all day every day. This is how I do it, mamas. Yep, I cook ahead, and then when life throws us curveballs, I have some stuff in my freezer that helps us. And I am in my 
almost 24th year of being a mama. Just finished my 18th year of homeschooling, rolling into our 19th year. And I've worked full-time or heavy part-time through most of that. And let me tell you, having meals prepped and ready ahead and in my freezer <laughs> or even meal prepped in my refrigerator, this is why I do this. This is what I have lived and experienced for over two decades. Mama always has to work to be ahead. Figure the jar with the most hoop is the oldest because, again, Lisa, 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 but as she has shared with me, the hooch means it's hungry. So I'm going to pour that off. So the hungrier it is, the closer it is to needing to be fed, you can keep it in the refrigerator for a long time, but you will have to feed it, I think it's once a week. So we are getting going here on working on my big batch sourdough discard pancake recipe that I've been working through. Now I have used Lisa's sourdough pancake recipe using the active starter, but not her discard recipe because her discard recipe, I believe they were buttermilk discard pancakes and I did not have any buttermilk at my house. So I had already worked on expanding and doing my multiple, multiple dozen batch of sourdough discard pancakes as I'm working through pulling together a big batch Mega Mama style of that recipe. So this recipe does not require milk or buttermilk or any additional ingredients, but it does obviously <laughs> use a lot of discard and it is helpful as this comes together. We do end up making about 13 dozen sourdough discard pancakes on this huge cook and marathon day. So this is where I've been keeping those new griddles. Since I moved everything out of my corner cabinet there to add bulk spices and herbs, I had to play ring around around the rosy in the kitchen. Let's see. Okay, so I got two more. I was trying to remember my name. One I've had since the farmhouse. I got two more. I was considering three. But they're all nice and greased up. I can't even tell which one. This is probably my original one that I've had for over a decade. But I've cooked on them and cooked this exact setup earlier this week. I'm probably just going to cook with coconut oil again. I will need to turn my fan on loud, <laughs> on super mega loud, so you'll hear my voice from above, but just saying I'll need that. Now, burners. been to refill my tank yet it has a cellular unit on there um, that will notify the propane company when it gets to a certain level that needs to be refilled but even with all the cooking that I do it hasn't needed to be refilled yet so that's nice we will have been in the kitchen a year in September I'm filming this in July Oh, I just think that's amazing. I didn't know if I'd go through, you know, take a propane a month. It's not, I can't tell you how many gallons it is. I can't speak that intelligently about it, but it's not a huge one. It's just, it's a stand up, how, however much that is. Okay, so onto the coconut oil. And as each griddle gets heating up, I just do a little spoonful of coconut oil on each. Now with the large ones, I have to watch it because there's a little drain space. And so we don't want all of our coconut oil to just end up in the drain on the side. Sometimes that happens. So I'm putting the coconut oil away from the drain so that we can actually use it on our pancakes, which is very helpful. The thing is I have to try to make sure the coconut oil doesn't all drain down into these little drain this little drain along the side and so now I am making my little pancake plops but 
Yes, because of the coconut oil, that first pancake <laughs> got took away with the oil a little bit there. But that's okay. Your pancakes will be perfect. These are just mega mama getting it done pancakes. I do have my fan on the highest setting because when I get cooking with this much cast iron, um, yeah, just really obviously it heats up the kitchen and it can get smoky very quickly. Uh, but we're doing it and I'm just making a circle shape with the pancakes that drowned in the coconut oil there a little bit. So it is a little different doing sourdough pancakes, both what I've done this discard big batch several times and then whatever I've used Lisa's sourdough pancake recipe using the active starter. I'm used to when I put pancakes down, obviously I eyeball and look for the 100 bubbles. That's how Travis taught me back in the day on how to flip a pancake. Uh, but with these sourdough pancakes, I'm just, I'm not always so sure and I'm still learning how to handle them. Lisa does talk about making sure that uh, what she likes to do is get her pancakes going in coconut oil and her goal is to only flip them one time. Now, of course, I do big pancakes. I don't do cute little, cutesy little pancakes. Um, we have some other family members that when they come for pancakes, they're like, wow, in my family, we only do like half that size. And so, you know, two of our pancakes equals four of the pancakes at their house. But again, I'm broke. I only know Mega and Lots. I like big pancakes and I cannot lie. <laughs> and sometimes my pancakes sit just a little too long on the cast iron and we'll see evidence of that. Good thing that I always have a, a chicken bowl. The chickens do not mind the extra sourdough experimenting pancakes here and there that they get. But for the most part, I mean, I think 97% of our pancakes work out pretty well. And even like that one I just flipped a moment ago that got a little scrunched up, no one cares at the end of the day. <laughs> they put butter on it. They put maple syrup on it and it is delicious and ready to go. We are having breakfast for dinner on this night and no one minds when mama is doing 13 dozen pancakes because that means they get pancakes for dinner. And yeah, I just have to gingerly get my spatula under there and see if they're ready to flip. They don't exactly give me the 100 bubbles. If I waited for the 100 bubbles, I would have a lot of burnt pancakes. So I have to analyze how the edges are looking. And if I could get my spatula under one end, I can then usually flip it. And you see on that one griddle, we have a little arrow shaped pancake. That's okay. And I am trying to do some cutesy little pancakes now in the little extra spaces there. And I'm filling my 10 by 15 glass dishes with pancakes. We get several of these filled. And that's how I'm storing them right now at this part of the process. The super mega, mega mama pancake extravaganza process. Okay, so my first big batch made enough for dinner tonight. We'll probably do fried eggs with it also. Now I'm going to double my big batch. Oh yes, I am. So I can get enough for breakfast tomorrow and then a batch for the freezer. I've got to get some stuff for the freezer out of this too. But actually cooking ahead enough for the freezer is yet to be seen. You know, it's easy for me when I am using my big batch freezer meal guides and those have already been planned out and the ingredients analyzed and I have cooked them many, many times. So I know like if I start one day doing step-by-step -step everything in my big batch freezer cooking guide and, the, and all the things, I know that I will end up with 35 to 40 freezer meals. On this particular Mega Mama Marathon Cooking Day, I am really only doing about three or four recipes as far as the sourdough goes. And then we are also prepping the bushel of peaches, the bushel of cherries, and continuing the process through making two gallons of yogurt. I do also plan to cook through my big batch freezer cooking guide coming up real soon. We're getting ready to come out with big batch freezer meal guides 20, guide 21, guide 22, guide 23, and I believe guide 24 as well. So lots of fun on the horizon with all these big batch freezer meal guides that I've been making since 2018. I'm just taking a bit of time this summer to focus on getting a handle on switching my family 100% to sourdough and learning to big batch cook sourdough as well. So now in doubling my big batch, <laughs> making a quadruple batch here, 
I, let's see, I've done a cup of organic cane sugar. I've done a cup of melted, I must said olive oil, of uh, coconut oil. I did two teaspoons of salt and two teaspoons of baking soda. And now, instead of eight cups of discard, I'm going to use 16 cups of discard and that means I'll also need to wrangle up the 16 eggs. But we are working through continuing to tweak this recipe and expand it. I will have my current big batch sourdough pancake recipe that I'm working through down in the comments below. Not in the comments, in the description. As I say, it's not on the blog yet. And on this day, I use it and I keep expanding it to get over 13 dozen sourdough discard pancakes for my family, but I'll also link Lisa's sourdough discard recipe. Again, hers also has buttermilk and some different ingredients in it. But if you don't need 13 dozen, haha, -ha, then you also, then I'm sure you want to look over and give her recipe a try as a great way to use up your discard as well. And just wait, we're going to get to these two and a half dozen homemade bagels using Lisa's recipe coming up. And I am so excited for you to see this. So of course, like how I get, I worry, oh, maybe I won't be able to use all this discard. I was thinking I needed a lot. And my thinking was correct, because I've got three quarters of one of these jars here. Uh, not quite, I'm looking at the little side reading. It's not, yeah, it's not quite to the six cup marks. And these weren't full to the top, so that's why I wasn't getting like a full eight cups from each of these because they weren't quite full and then they each had an, almost an inch or more of hooch on the top that we poured off. So anyway, I have just under six cups left here and we still were going to do those discard bagels and I've never made those before. These pancakes I've been working with, so we're getting to know each other well. So we'll be doing this as a total of a triple, a triple big batch. <laughs> so for the average family, that's uh, super mega massive. For my family, that's dinner and breakfast and the equivalent of another breakfast in a freezer, probably whatever we're done. But if you wanna make up a triple big batch, uh, you could end up with eight to 10 breakfast, still big batch pancake freezer meals in your freezer. And we still have that quart and then another little pint um, of our new discard that's in the refrigerator. That doesn't have to be used today though. That can wait, but if this six cups is not an enough for when we get into all the bagels, we'll use that too. In doing Lisa's recipe for the discard bagels, I believe if I remember correctly, and I will link it down below, I believe that um, each batch that'll get eight bagels is two cups of discard. So that would be 24 bagels with six cups of discard. So if it goes well, I'd like to say we'll do at least 48 bagels, but we'll see. Might not go that way. We might be just happy with 24 and call it a day with that. We'll see, we'll see. I'm just mixy, mixy in these pancakes. Oh, and also down in the description, I will link Lisa's sourdough pancake recipe that I've also made several, several times for my family as well down below. And I will link for you Lisa's sourdough discard pancakes, which I believe have buttermilk in them also, which is no doubt delicious. All right, so here's our double big batch. Oh, we need to add eggs. Hmm, here it is with no eggs. Okay, let me go get 16 eggs. Let's see if we can get our bowl to the top here. Okay, the 16 eggs are in here. It's full of the tippy top almost. We got enough room, I'm just gonna gently whisk now. And yes, I should have used one of my Mega Mama bowls, if not my 30 quart bowl, at least my 20 quart bowl. I did not have that available though right now because they were using that for all the fresh fruit prep that was happening at the big 16 foot table in order to do jam in the coming days. That's the plan. And so I'm using one of my smaller bowls. You know we like to fill things to the top, but 
just slow and gentle there. There you go. We got it all whisked together. And now we're going to fire up these griddles again. What's not shown us on camera, because it's no fun to watch, is I did sit down and take about a 20 minute break in my mama chair. Let everything kind of chill out over here. So we got to get the pans going again. Get the fan going. Pancakes going. Here's the big bushel of cherries that have all been pitted nicely. Well, that was sad. Trouble in paradise. I was just rolling right along, cooking pancakes and talking to you all, and I got a memory card error. And those are not something someone's filming wants to see. It means I've been recording and recording and filming and sharing pancakes, and the memory card just ended up not wanting to record any of it. So, pretend that you saw me do two batches on these four griddles so far of our next double batch. So I'm just cleaning up again. I had to stop to, thankfully, the 42 clips I had already recorded on my card are fine. But I'm not recording on that card anymore. <laughs> so we're gonna, we're, we're persevering. I'm gonna need to whisk that a little bit. So I want to say, go Mega Mama, go, go, go. Well, that might as well have just been a sheet pan pancake, huh? <laughs> I thought about testing this in the oven. Uh, you know, I've done a lot of sheet pan pancakes through the years, but I also didn't really have recipe or cooking style testing time on this day. I just knew I had been doing these Mega Mama batches of the sourdough discard pancakes with this recipe that I was working on. I knew that it worked for the most part, besides, again, me drowning pancakes in olive oil a little bit sometimes uh, around the edges, but it's all going to work out. And as I say, at the very end, we do end up with 13 dozen pancakes and we work through the process. But yeah, I'm definitely excited about working on converting my sheet pan pancake recipe to sourdough. I know I have several different variations of it I've shared over the years on largefamilytable.com. Good thing my family just likes pancakes in all of its forms. You all know I have been working so very hard on the Business Minded Mama course and that with some recent feedback I received, I decided to not overwhelm, what in the world? <laughs> Try to not overwhelm everyone with teaching my students absolutely everything I've learned about creating a successful online business for the last 12 years. The original Business Minded Mama course was teaching it all and so many, so many of my friends and some course creation experts just said, Jay Morrell, you are going to paralyze these mamas with information and they're not going to be able to get started because it's just going to be information overload. And that is the last thing that I want to do to any mama whatsoever. My heart is to help any mama who wants to get going being successful online. And the last thing I would want to do is to give a mom so much information that they feel paralyzed like they can't even start or they don't know where to start. So I have forcing myself under wise advice to break down each and every aspect that I know and that I've had success with making money online and building out platforms and income streams and all those things. I'm breaking it down into what I'm calling the successful business mama suite. And the very first course that I am launching that is available now is called YouTuber Extraordinaire. I just launched it this week and it is available for an additional $30 off price now through July 31st. It is going to be available all the way through August 7th, but as of the 31st, the price does go up another $30 and then the cart closes on August 7th with the course launching live on August 8th, which is my 44th birthday. The YouTuber Extraordinaire course is going to be six weeks of courses with yours truly. And not only will I be teaching everything a mama needs to know about YouTube to get going and build her audience and expand her brand and all of those so many mega lots details. I'm also leading a weekly one hour live group coaching call with all of my students 
where I will be taking their YouTube questions in advance and helping them with their channels and holding their hand through the whole six week YouTuber extraordinaire course process. There's also bonus PDFs and just a ton that I'm cramming into YouTuber extraordinaire. Now, some people have asked me if this course is only YouTube because they really want to know other business things from me. So yes, YouTuber extraordinaire, I am focusing on YouTube, but here's the thing. I don't know if you know this, but I run my mouth a lot. <laughs> and so when I have knowledge and helps and things that I can share with people, I'm, sh I'm sure I'm going to wax and wane into various business topics that can be helpful. But the focus of YouTuber extraordinaire is helping moms get going, launching their channel, and going from there, also helping mamas who already have a channel but feel stuck at a certain point. So wherever you are in your YouTube journey, I am going to hold your hand and help you and guide you through in YouTuber extraordinaire. And for my very first enrollees right now through July 31st, you could go to largefamilytable.com forward slash YouTube and also get the additional $30 off for the next few days through July 31st. YouTuber extraordinaire will never ever Ever be priced this low again. This is my very first enrollee super discounted price and YouTuber extraordinaire will never be this low again. But I want my students to get in there, to learn a lot with me, to have a super wonderful educational time and be able to get their YouTube channels off the ground and for current YouTubers to be able to take their channels to the next level. I have learned so much over the past nine years that I've been on YouTube. My first several years was as a very part-time hobby from about 2014 through 2018. I already had a very successful online business several years before I even started on YouTube that brought my husband home full-time in 2013. And because he was home full-time, it allowed me to play around with this other little hobby that I started to pick up called YouTube in 2014. I saw so much potential on YouTube and my successful business mama mind saw so much potential that by 2018, I was able to sell my prior online very successful business and go all in on YouTube. And I've been full time on YouTube since 2018 and I've been able to push the gas pedal since that time and expand and grow from there. Now, of course, I have many other income streams and avenues that I have developed beyond YouTube, but YouTube is so powerful that it really is the springboard for many of the other things that I'm able to do even now in 2023. So if you would like to learn YouTube from me, I would like to be your YouTube mama mentor and your mompreneur mentor extraordinaire. All you have to do is click the first link in the description below, head to largefamilytable.com forward slash YouTube and let me help you grow from there. Here's all the beautiful peaches that have joined the massive food preservation party. So these, we are just going to cover them in plastic wrap and they are gonna go in one of our downstairs refrigerator for tomorrow. And then the next day I start preserving these, but she had time to help me prep this evening. So these are pitted and sliced and ready to go. Okay, lots of noise going on. Woo, 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 let's see, I might have to just, okay, sorry, you've been in a wind tunnel. I am letting my last couple pancakes sit there and I've been working on a cleanup and I'm going to sit and drink my lemon water for about 15 minutes and read through and think on and meditate and ponder <laughs> the sourdough discard recipe. I'll probably set that back in the fridge because that's been sitting out. We will get that thought through and after the little 15 minute break, we will tackle the discard bagels. Okay, so we made three of these 10 by 15 pans full of pancakes. And as I said, one will be 
earmarked for dinner, one will be earmarked for breakfast. Now they're very well, I mean, I don't know how much people are gonna eat at any given time. Sometimes you get a toddler, sometimes you get a toddler that's scarfing them down and a 12 year old who just wants one little thing. <laughs> you just don't know. These are on the thinner side also, but they are super duper delicious. So I'm going to put two in the fridge and they will be eaten within the next 48 hours. And then I'll put this one in the freezer. I'm going to put the one for the freezer in a gallon or two freezer bags, but we'll get to that. I'm just leaving them in these for the moment. And yes, Mega Mama is sweating over all those Mega Pancakes and cast iron. I will say, as I'm doing all those pancakes, I'm thinking, I cannot wait to get to the point, but again, I'm gonna try to wait until fall to start working on converting my own bacon recipes to sourdough because I have some tried and true recipes for sheet pan pancakes that I've done for years. You'll remember I did several videos on those back in 2016, 2017. Anyway, I think one of the first things I'm gonna do is work on converting that sheet pan pancake recipe to sourdough. Maybe I should start doing that now. Okay, I'm gonna try to resist. I've got a few other things I can work on and do in the meantime. So Travis went to pick up our little yogurt starter. When he gets back, I need to get that added to the yogurt and put it on its yogurt cycle basically until morning. We're gonna get going on the bagels. I've read the recipe, I've sat with it, I've, I've gelled with it. It looks great. Uh, Lisa has a recipe for sourdough discard bagels and then she has another recipe that's very similar for sourdough bagels made with starter. The discard recipe requires some active yeast where the sourdough recipe using just the active starter, that is the yeast, it's obviously not required. But since we have all of this discard that I've been saving up, we're gonna do the discard bagels. But I will link both recipes for you down in the description below. Before we get going on the bagels though, the next thing I want to do, well, two things. I would like to get as far as I can doing the math and trying to do the biggest batch I feel comfortable with of Lisa's beginner sourdough bread that I've been making again and again and again, even though I've done 10 loaves at a time, I've dished out the ingredients separately. So I'm probably gonna times four or times six the recipe and try to just get experience handling a big batch of sourdough, having a big batch fermenting, doing stretch and folds on a big batch. I don't know how that's gonna go. I wanna give that a try. And I have done a big batch of her sourdough English muffins. For my membership community, I did a video where I times three that recipe, and that turned out fantastic. So we might times six that tonight too. We're, we're big batching all the things. Let's get working on that. The bagels look like something that we can get started and actually complete this evening, but the bread and the English muffins that we will work through baking tomorrow, and I'll still have that in this video, those we need to get prepped tonight. And so right here, I am just taking a little bit of a break to wash up the tools that I've been using, working through all of this sourdough. You know, I need this measuring cup, I need different wooden spoons, and I'm gonna also wash up my ladle for the pancakes, and that bowl I definitely need, because I feel like I'm down some bowls, but we have different projects going on with my bowls here. So just take it a little bit of time. Now I can't always do this with all the tools that I cook with on a mega marathon cooking day. I know that some feedback that I get is I should wash my dishes as I go, and I think that's precious, but what you don't see, because I really am a mom of nine, uh, seven of my children, well, really eight, you know, they're all up in this kitchen at different times, even on my big filming days, and sometimes I have nine of my children, because my oldest will stop by and everything uh, in this kitchen. They might be around the counter on the other side or at the table. Uh, different times I turn my camera off for them to come through and get what they need or use the sink, and yes, there are definitely times when I have someone available and they will do the dishes for me and get a load going, but I'm not able to actively hand wash and keep on top of every single dish and thing that I cook with throughout the day of, you know, cooking for eight to 12 hours. Sometimes I'm cooking for 16 hours. And so we take breaks. And so I take a moment when I can and do the most pertinent items. And let's see if I can say that through congestion. Can I even say pertinent? <laughs> Correct. I don't know if I can say it even when I'm not congested, uh, but I definitely 
work on getting the tools that I need quickly and that I need to have available for what's coming up fresh and clean and ready to go. And then the larger batches of dishes will just have to be done once this big project is done. Uh, but again, sometimes in the middle of it, but at this moment, I did not have anyone else available to wash the dishes. And that's just fine because that is real mama life, right? You just wash your dishes, handle your business, do the best you can and keep on going. So Travis has returned with the yogurt I needed for my starter. Today I'm going to put a few spoonfuls in my gallon there and I'm going to whisk that up and then I'm going to set my Instant Pot on a 10 hour yogurt setting. I was doing eight and then some viewers shared with me that they do 10 and it just gives them even thicker Greek yogurt. And of course I strain it also, I strain the whey off, but I thought, okay, well let's just do a 10 hour cycle here and see how that goes. Okay, so now the yogurt's set on a 10 hour cycle. It'll start to read zero, but it'll count all the way up. Nothing else we gotta do with that. Travis got us some yogurt from the Walmart. Okay, so now by, by the times four that I'm doing on this recipe, which this bowl might be enough actually, or I guess I'll go for a bigger one. I need two cups of active starter. So gotta get that, we fed it earlier. And you can see earlier it was thin and sad and now it is nice and thick and bubbly and very happy. Whoops, happy in life. What I would like to do is a time fours, a times four batch twice in two different bowls so I can work with and stretch and ferment and handle those two large amount of bulk doughs at one time. Once we get this going, I think we'll actually do our beginning prep on the discard bagels. And then there's some times in the discard bagel recipe where we have to let them rest for 30 minutes here or 60 minutes there. So during those times, we can continue to babysit our total times eight batch of the sourdough bread and we'll get going on the sourdough English muffins. So just say, we, we got time for these things coming up, but I do want to get this going at least. Well, and I wonder if I have enough starter. I guess I need to look at how much starter I need for those English muffins too. The bagels, we're going to do discard bagels and add yeast to them. So, well, let me see how much I have here. I probably have enough on this jar on the sides that I can scrape down to feed. Okay, so we got about one cup there. So let me just scrape this down. And I've been told you have to be careful with stuff on the sides so you don't get mold. And mold can happen, so. So that's what we're leaving in there that we will feed with one cup of flour and one cup of water. We're gonna get the other cup that we need from our other batch of starter. This batch is not quite as thick and happy. It just, it probably just needs to be fed again. It's fine. It's not looking like how it looked earlier. It looks like my earlier feedings and my that I worked with when I was just getting going with sourdough just a couple weeks ago, you know, back in the olden days when I was new at this, haha. <laughs> uh, but I still baked with it and everything still turned out beautifully. So I'm gonna use a cup from this. And so what I am attempting to do here is again, I am really doing Lisa's recipe times eight, but in the past when I've done that, I've done up to 10 loaves of her beginner sourdough bread at one time. I set up 10 individual bowls and I just have myself do the recipe 10 different times. And so now I'm doing a times four batch in two different bowls. And as I've mentioned, that means I'm going to have a huge amount of dough that I need to stretch and fold and work with. But the eventual goal is that by the following day, I can take each big lump of fermented sourdough and cut it down 
to be four loaves. I would love to get to the point, and I've seen it done. You know, sourdough bakeries online and other sourdough mentors, I see them work with these huge, I want to say almost like my 30 quart bowl size of sourdough, and then they might divide that down into, you know, 10 or 15 smaller loaves. And you know me, if I'm going to do something and work with it, and especially if I'm multiplying it out because I feed an army, and let me say, you know, my husband is six foot six. I have many teenagers and adults that are already over six foot tall, like I feed an army and I feed a tall and actively growing army. So that means I need a whole lot of sourdough all the time. Okay, so times four in Lisa's recipe and then doing that twice. In each bowl, I have two cups of active starter and I have 14 cups of flour. So now we're gonna add in the water and the salt. Okay, so just for one loaf, it was two teaspoons. We're doing times four in each bowl. So each one was eight teaspoons. Converting that to tablespoons, it was just a little over, it was like 2.6 tablespoons. So I did that in each. Now we're going to work on mixing it up. I'm excited. It's our first time mixing this recipe big batch style. Yay. Taking the watch off for this might be necessary. And so of course, working with bigger batches means it's going to be more stirring and more patience. It's going to take longer to do one times four batch than it would for me to mix four separate bowls, or, or maybe, I mean, we, I guess we could run a race, huh? Maybe the time would work out about the same, but I'm gonna be working with this one bowl here quite a bit, and then, oh my, then we're going to tackle that bulb under my elbow there and we'll see how that's going to go. But at this point, I need to get this mixed together and then we let it sit for 30 minutes and then we begin the stretch and fold process from there where we will, oh, there you go. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Can I do it? Okay. Slow and steady there. Slow and steady. Uh, what the goal is that by the end of this huge cooking marathon day that we're able to have both batches sit out on the counter overnight for a longer fermentation. And again, the fermentation process also breaks down the gluten, which is very important for many people. And then in the morning, I'll be able to divide these big batches down into the total of eight loaves, work with those and get those in my little bread baskets to do a longer fermenting process in the refrigerator, which will end in them being able to be baked or put in the freezer. But as I say, we, we're going through 10 to 15 of these smaller loaves a week. And again, it's all a process. We will expand and do new things from there. But so far, I'm growing in this current process that I'm walking out. All right, so this <laughs> times eight batch in two bowls is gonna sit here and like it while we move on to the next thing. Okay, so I just went through Lisa's sourdough discard bagel recipe one time, and I have that roll in a grease pan with a wet tea towel over top of it. So now we're gonna do it again. I'm hoping to do it four times because each, because, because each batch makes eight bagels. And if I'm making bagels, I'm making a few bagels. Give us a few, right? Okay, there you go. So let's see, so first off we put in a cup of warm water and then three teaspoons of active yeast. And I will link her sourdough bagel recipe below if you don't want to use the yeast again if you want to use the active starter. I know I said that, but I just like to say it again. Okay, so whisk, where did my whisk go? Where did I set it? A whisk. So you're just supposed to whisk this up 
and then cover it with a towel and let it sit there for about five minutes. What I did that first time was get my other ingredients ready. It calls for all per unbleached, all purpose flour and honey and salt. Of course, the sourdough discard. So that's just gonna sit there for five minutes and like it. And then we'll add our other ingredients. through the process of getting going with my sourdough discard bagels. Now I had just let the yeast and the cup of warm water sit in my mixer for about five minutes and now I'm adding in my sourdough discard. We're adding in honey which just makes these scrub diddly dishes <laughs> if I can speak. It's just so good and we're going to add in our flour and our salt and our other needed ingredients. I highly, highly recommend Lisa's sourdough discard bagels. If you watch over on my friend Sarah's channel on our tribe of many, we joke because we both got our sourdough starter from Sarah. And let me just say, we have just hit the ground running because we are mamas who, if we're going to do sourdough, we need a lot of sourdough. And so she did the sourdough discard bagels also. Uh, she's done them several times, and I think you've seen those in some of her videos already. And her family just rips through them, I think she said, within one weekend. And, yeah, I'll tell you from the future, no matter what I say, I don't get any bagels in my freezer. 
because we only make two and a half dozen and they were definitely gone in less than 48 hours. Everybody loves them. Everyone is on team Lisa sourdough bagels. So I just am now in the bagel business. That's our new job in life. All right, so here is our third batch. Ready to go. And again, we'll just let that go for two or three minutes. And so I am rinsing out my Ziploc bags. I get asked often if I reuse my Ziploc bags, and I do, especially if they're with fruit and vegetables. If they've had raw meat in them, there's no reusing them. But if they've had fruits and vegetables or, or bagels or, you know, bread or other things like that, I can definitely reuse them. I use my uh, rooster cookie jar and also my different jars around to set my bags on. And now I'm going to probably eat half of that cucumber because it was so delicious. I mean, everybody loves a 10 p.m. salad, right? But I was hungry. And yep, eat more cucumber as I go to get this batch of bread on the counter. And it's going to sit there now and rise for, I believe it's 60 to 90 minutes. But Lisa says it depends on the temperature of the kitchen. And my kitchen was very, very warm at this point. So I believe we let ours go for about an hour or so. And then the real fun gets started. So I'm chopping up all the ingredients here for my salad. That pepper was very spicy. And maybe it is a banana pepper. I just don't remember banana peppers being spicy. But what do I know? I mean, I don't have banana peppers every day. <laughs> uh, I have them from the jar often. And I love their tanginess in a salad. And I do not mind a spicy pepper at all. Not whatsoever. Now in my garden, I still have not gotten my first green pepper. Like bell pepper. I had coral peppers. Red peppers. So many beautiful bell pepper varieties but yeah I don't have any yet I do have some small ones so maybe there's hope but these uh banana peppers have been phenomenal I mean I've been getting you know 10 to 15 peppers off of each plant from those and continue to do so so there's hope and yes I'm also just eating the raw green beans these are the golden wax beans and I know I picked them a little early I've had some people tell me to leave them on longer. I'm just so scared of losing all this hard work. And so for some things, you know, I don't mind picking it early and still using it. Even the young golden wax beans, whenever they're sauteed up uh, with butter or bacon grease, there are no complaints here, that's for sure. Now with my lettuce, I was just trying to grab some lettuce leaves with my hands and I accidentally pulled some of the lettuce up by the roots. And so that's why I have to pull the roots that apparently I, I harvested with it. Uh, don't worry, there's tons of lettuce left. But I had to pull the roots off because no one wants to eat dirty lettuce roots. And I put the lettuce in there. What's left of the cucumber, the pepper, the precious little tomato. And now I'm going to chop up and split and throw a bunch of those golden wax beans in there as well. And I'm going to put a plop of my Nancy's full fat probiotic sour cream. And then I also have some of the Bragg's. Uh, it's like an Italian dressing. And then I also have some nutritional yeast I'm going to shake on here. Gives it like a little cheesy flavor. And with my cottage cheese, that ended up being about half a cup of cottage cheese. And that's the Nancy's probiotic cheese you get from Azure, which is my favorite. So there's my little mama late dinner salad situation. But not going to eat it quite yet. I'm going to. We need to get this other loaf and this other other situation going. And then because when I was in the garden, I had shoved, well, I don't think I have enough room in here. Okay, hold on, hold on. I was hoping I would have room for those beans in there, but I don't, so I'll just put them back. Still trying to get the lettuce pieces out of here. When I was, in the garden, grabbing my lettuce, I accidentally pulled up some by the roots, and I didn't mean to do that. There's still plenty out there, but that's what I've been here picking out. Okay. I'm going to use these beans here in a few days on a big bulk cooking day, which is just a regular large family cooking day. 
So here I am working with my stretch and folds. And again, this is a times four batch. And boy, I'm sure not a sourdough bakery, but I would like to be. Uh, I would like to learn their techniques for doing big batches at one time. So I did, uh, I'm wetting my hands a lot to help me work with this dough. And I'm also feeling my measuring cup there. So I have some warm water available and I don't have to walk back and forth to the sink, but I am just trying to get this dough workable. But of course, timer went off and I have to go over and check on something else. But we're just going to work on stretching the dough, get it to work with us. Pretty okay for not weighing my ingredients. I can say at the end, it makes the most delicious bread. So even though things look scary, we continue on with the process and it all works out in the end. And my family eats it and loves it and has no complaints. So I have expanded to letting the bread set out on the island. All right, so we have our four batches of bagel dough now, and I've got my timer set for an hour. And then we've done our third stretch and fold on this bread. So I don't remember if I've done, I, don't, I think I've only done two stretch and folds. So I've set my timer for the big bulk sourdough for another 30 minutes. We'll do a final stretch and fold for that. Then we'll get that either, I don't know, wet dish towel or plastic wrap, and then that'll sit on the counter until I deal with it tomorrow. It's supposed to be six to 12 hours. Uh, and I also have another timer set for our four batches of bagels. That'll go off in an hour. I'm gonna go take a little sit break and eat my salad now. No. All right, so my big salad break is over. I ate all of it, it was delicious. So while we're waiting for the timer to go off, we will start what we need to do for the English muffins. But not before we do another stretch and fold visit on my two big dough parties going on here. They do have to be stretched and uh, folded every 30 minutes for three times. And then after that, I can put a wet towel on them. You see I have those flour sack towels. Uh, I recently had picked up two more packs of those at Walmart for this baking, so it would not take so many of my kitchen towels, which still happens. But, but after the third round of stretch and folds, then it just feels easy. The dough sets out, and it's just going to do its first round on the counter overnight. We've got about 20 minutes or so left for our bagel dough. So while we wait on that, I'm going to work on going around and clean it up from our other projects. I'm trying to think, wait a minute, what did we get done? Well, we've got yogurt going. Have we accomplished anything else? We've got a times eight batch of the sourdough going. We've got four bowls going with bagel dough. Prep, prep, prep. We made a salad. <laughs> I know we did that. Okay, let me get all these wet. And again, these will just stay on the counter all night. We'll deal with them tomorrow. Oh, I know what we did. <laughs> we did big batch pancakes. I'm like, I know we did other things. I've been cooking for hours. Wait a minute. Yes, it's all coming back to me now. <laughs> and I did have a teenage helper. They prepped all the fruit for jam that I'm gonna do day after tomorrow. Several of my kids have an equestrian camp this week. My mom is taking them and going with them every day and she's teaching side saddle classes there too this week, which is a lot of fun. So while they are gone, like a day camp every day this week, Monday through Friday, still with this many kids, I'm gonna have a posse of kids at home too. And they have things that they're getting into, but I'm going to also, <laughs> in, in and around Mama Life, get going on some jam preserving and zucchini bread and those fun endeavors also. Okay, I know what we need to do before we clean up. I need to get, I'm gonna do a times four batch of the English muffins. And again, I'm going to get some of these <laughs> items that we are prepping ahead here. We can get some of them in the freezer. That would be amazing. 
That's why I'm doing a variety of things, bagels and English muffins and breads. We've been going through 10 to 15 of those round loaves of bread a week. And probably two of them would be the equivalent of one large loaf from the grocery store, only it's thicker and nutritious and all those good things. Um, but like for sandwich, and this morning we had eggs and several family members had two nice pieces of sourdough with their eggs. So it is highly favored, <laughs> highly favored for sure. So now in this bowl, I've done a times three batch before, so this time I'm gonna do a times five batch. Okay, it'll be 10 cups of flour, four cups of water, two cups of starter, four tablespoons of honey, one, uh, four teaspoons of salt, and four teaspoons of uh, baking soda, and then also some coconut oil. But her directions say, we're just gonna do the flour, the water, and the starter, and mix that up and let it sit with a wet towel over it, like a tea towel, overnight. And then tomorrow, we will add in the other ingredients of the honey, the salt, and the baking soda. And then right after that, I just start scooping it onto the cast iron and making English muffins from home. Oh my goodness, okay. So amazing. So, let's get going here. Four cups of water. Now, Lisa's recipe is not times four like this. Um, her recipe is two cups of flour, one cup of water, and so on. But I'll link that down below for you. I just do everything big batch. And since I've done Lisa's English Muffins Big Batch several times now, I can say they're just, they're just so easy to prep. <laughs> they really are because they only need a few ingredients and a mixed up and then they just sit on the counter with a wet towel on them until the next day. Now something else I have learned from Lisa is let's just say the next day there's a few more small ingredients I add and then I mix them up and get doing English muffins on my stovetop. But let's say, oh, have we ever heard this before? Something unexpected happens. Uh, I wake up and a kid is sick who wasn't sick, or I don't know, the power's out, or the car broke down, or we, you know, just who knows, insert life here. Let's just say I can't get to those English muffins that have been out on the counter proofing all night. All I have to do and this is where some people can get held up. So listen to me share with you Lisa's tip, okay? All I have to do is take that bowl of prepped dough and put it in the refrigerator. And even if it had to sit in there a day or two, it is just fine. And all I would do then is when I am able to circle back around. See, this is where I think sourdough and I are gonna get along just fine. Because if sourdough can be flexible and I have to be a professional flexible person here in my life. Um, if sourdough can be flexible with me, I can be flexible with sourdough. And that means we're going to be really good friends. So then what I would do is after two days or so when I could get back to it, I would just set it out on the counter, let it sit there an hour or so, and then start working with it and make my English muffins from there. So just know if you get working sourdough and you just get to the point where you can't do the next thing, stick it in the refrigerator and then return to it when you can. So you saw there that I was working on making my homemade bagels and here I am working through another batch and it's just as simple as I just make a little ball, poke a little hole through it and then I'm putting it out on a baking sheet and we're gonna cover it again with a wet towel and it is going to sit there and do another rise for about an hour or so. And then after that, I just, again, well, now that I'm working with sourdough, I, I find things coming out of my mouth like, sourdough is easy, <laughs> but the bagels are easy at that point. Then it's gonna be, we're gonna boil them for one minute on one side, flip them over, they're going to boil for another minute on the other side. And then we bake them for about 20 or 25 minutes and they're done. And let me just tell you, they are the most delicious bagels we have ever had in our whole entire life. And we have had a lot of bagels. My goodness, these are phenomenal. And we do a two and a half dozen batch on this mega cooking marathon day. But coming up, I, I want to do like a times 10 batch, you know? Can I actually get any of these in the freezer? That's, that's the thing right there. When you have a lot of kids and a lot of family living at the house, eating there all day, every day, 
it can take quite a bit of cooking a big batch ahead to actually get enough to get it in the freezer. I'm trying to do that on this day. We do get some things on the freezer, but like I've already shared with you, haha, ha, spoiler alert, these bagels are so delicious. None of these make it in the freezer. Not at all. And the English muffins, I was hoping to get a batch in the freezer, but over a few days, once they were done with the bagels, the English muffins were doggone. So really, I ended up cooking ahead and prepping ahead for the following week to try some new sourdough things again like the bagels and I already knew they love the English muffins and then of course we have the pancakes and the yogurt and the fruit we're prepping so we do a lot on this mega marathon cooking day and we're doing components for various meals and I've also invested this day to yet again continue to grow in my sourdough skills and I'm so glad that you're able to be on this journey with me and we are working all of these things out and yeah just bagels bagels of the future make a mama bagels so I do like projects where I can prep part of it and then it can just sit there and like it while I work on other things so I'm now doing my first load of bagels in the boiling water and I have boiled these bagels on one side and then I flip them and I boil them on the other side and I go through each batch it takes a couple batches but not difficult at all of course I would have loved to have had one of my bigger pots out this pot only fit six or seven bagels at a time but for the time of night it was by the time I was working on these bagels and how things were going this this was just fine this definitely did the job the family is in bed now at this point and we are working through, continuing to work through these Mega Mama cooking projects. And then any of the little holes that kind of got squishy and tried to close back up with the dough since it was in hot boiling water there, all I did was, I, as you saw, I just took the end of my spoon or um, a metal spoon and just opened the holes back up. These bagels are very forgiving. We do make them in all sizes, but mainly make a mama size <laughs> um, and each batch of bagels I put in I believe it was a teaspoon of baking soda and a tablespoon of sugar again look for Lisa's recipe in the description below and she will talk you through it just like she has guided Sarah and I through it but I am so thankful for these sourdough bagels they are did I tell you they were delicious yep they're delicious And I just set the timer on my watch for one minute and do a flip. I need my watch timer to help me with cooking projects all the time. And even for something as simple as a minute, I will set it because if I get called away or anything happens, um, I don't want to end up boiling these bagels for too long and, and then melt away. But I'm just reopening the holes there a little bit for our next trick. We're going to actually get these in the oven and start baking them up that way. And I just cannot wait for you to see these. So finally, finally, we are to the point getting the bagels in the oven. But here, like I said, 20, 25 minutes, we are going to have fresh homemade sourdough bagels. And even though it's nighttime and now the family is in bed, uh, Mama taste tests one of those bagels and it is absolutely delicious. So there's our first pan coming out. And I just put that to the bottom and move the lower pan up. Thank goodness. We have both ovens operated again. We've had no other issues with the second big oven. So I'm thankful for that. So we did it friends, we have made 32 sourdough discard bagels, 
They smell delicious. I'm gonna taste test half of this one. They're amazing. The family is going to love them. I, I know already that they will. It's bedtime. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we've done a lot and we will get back to working on some more of these projects. Worst case scenario, if I can't get to the English muffins tomorrow, I can just throw that dough in the refrigerator for whenever I can circle back to it. Same thing with my bread, but I'm hopeful. I mentioned we do have a special out of town birthday party tomorrow and such. And mom is tired now, but I'll check in tomorrow. We'll see how it goes. Wonderful. I got a cream cheese mustache, nice and chewy, which is why we boiled them first. Everything you would want a bagel to be. How did you do that, Lisa's sourdough discard bagels? Mm. So good. Please make them. I'm just thinking through. Maybe it was a little bit of the sugar in the water. Oh no, they're, they're delicious. I'm gonna go get put my my pistachios on as Benjamin calls it. Put put my pajamas on. Take my face off all of that. To let these continue to cool, and then I'll put them in our bread box there. We'll get them in the refrigerator. Everyone is gonna be presently surprised. Mhm. Mm so good. So I already filled. I'm sorry. I just didn't, didn't make it to the bathroom. Get in my pajamas. That's okay. Slowing down. We'll get, we're gonna make it. I filled my larger Rubbermaid container. I'm going to fill the smaller one now. I just sat, drank some lemon water, ate the other half of that bagel, and liked it. So here's how. I mean, it's just the perfect bagel box. Didn't even, didn't even add anything else to these. Wow. Wow. Gigantic homemade sourdough discard bagels. They're just phenomenal. Now our little list here is all out of order, but we did the pancakes, we did the discard bagels, and we are prepping the sourdough English muffins. Also, this is my big batch bread prep. We did that. So we're getting things done. Now I'm not doing it tonight, but we will also put at least a good portion of those pancakes up in the freezer. And we're gonna see about the bagels. I have a feeling those are gonna be super exciting, which if I distract them with bagels, then that means I might be able to get all of the big batch English muffins I'm doing in the freezer. And then maybe in another week or two, I can do it again, but I can leave out the English muffins, distract them with those, and then get the bagels in the freezer. That might be how I get on top of this. Okay friends, I feel like saying welcome back, but two seconds later, it's afternoon of the next day. Our dough has been rising. Look at this, you can see. Look at that nice little, nice little bump on the bowl. Those bagels last night, those 32 bagels were fantastic. My family ate that second smaller container for breakfast this morning. Forget the pancakes, let's just do bagels. So what that means, is when I get to bagging these items up and getting them into the freezer, which I honestly probably won't do until tomorrow, I may end up with getting ahead on the pancakes. So, hey, that's always exciting. And these bagels might just be breakfast for the next few days. I was thinking back on it. I'm really happy with the process and how it went. I could see myself getting into a routine of having fresh bagels every week and then also bagels in the freezer 
we're gonna get there. So, with the bread, the dough that we have rising, well, this here, this is, oops, our times four batch of the English muffins that we need to add a few ingredients to, and literally, we just add those in, stir it up, and we're gonna start cooking English muffins on the stove. And then, in addition to that, we have these two batches, woo, and it's, it's sticking because the towel's kind of dried out now, but that's okay, I'll work with that. We have this bowl and, hold on here, this bowl of our sourdough bread dough, and I did find my dough cutter. <laughs> yeah, I had to, had to interview a few folks, and it was found, it was just put in the wrong drawer, but last night I just was like, just give me a knife. It's so much easier to cut with this. So, we're going to divide these into eight separate loaves and then my other new thing i've added in in the last week or so is proofing the dough letting it do its long ferment in those bowls and then that gives the nice little ridges whenever you flip the bread out and do the expansion scores and get it in the oven it just one more layer of beauty in the bread right so i had to laugh last night too while i was doing all this cooking whenever i have my big cooking day and it goes into late into the evening, I catch up on my friend's YouTube video. So I was watching my friend Sarah over at Our Tribe of Many, and you know, we're real life friends too. Okay, okay. All, hold on here, let me try that. You know, we're, you know, we're IRL friends, right, in real life, and I love all the sourdough things that she's doing. So both Sarah and I got our sourdough starter and our sourdough 411 hand-holding help together with our friend Lisa. And so we are both, it looks like Sarah and I are both going to sourdough school this summer, which is awesome, I'm proud of us. So she's been doing the discard pizzas I saw in her video, which looked like they turned out great. So also go over and check out Sarah on our Tribe of Many to see the different sourdough adventures that she's been tackling as well. We've done many of the same recipes of Lisa's and then we've also branched out and done some different recipes of Lisa's. So together, Sarah and I, are going to learn and do all the sourdough things this summer and get our big families <laughs> eating tons of sourdough, which she said her family loves. I know my family loves. We're, we're excited. Alrighty, so here's what it looks like with the towel off this morning, and I just times four. So if you were doing one batch, it is one tablespoon of honey, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking soda. Again, I will link the recipe below. But since we're doing a times four batch of English muffins, it's four tablespoons of honey, four teaspoons of salt, four teaspoons of baking soda. So we're just gonna add this in now, give it a good stir up, and get cooking. I've also got my cast iron clean from last night. Now, I get a lot of questions about cleaning cast iron. You can even look at the Lodge cast iron website. They say on there, modern day cast iron is fine for just washing with a little dish soap, oiling it when you're done. That's how I have always handled my cast iron, and I haven't had any major issues. Also over in my Large Family Table community membership at largefamilytable.com forward slash community, my friend Katie, she has a website dedicated to cast iron cooking. It's called castironrecipes.com. She did a special class for us over in membership just on cast iron care. She also has a lot of information on it over at her website. So if you'd like more information on caring for your cast iron, be sure to check Katie out. And so here now, it's the following morning, and we are getting ready to go to the lake for a special birthday party that'll be happening on this afternoon. Now, I do have some time before we go, so, so that's good, and I had planned, well, I could go ahead and get these sourdough English muffins done. Looking a little toasty. 
And so now I just need to go through and flip my English muffins as they are ready. Of course, I've got some English muffins in different sizes. We have a few little ones, but most of these are, yep, Mega Mama size. <laughs> but these also turn out delicious. And I put them on the cooling racks on my little countertop beside my stove there before I get those packaged up and put in the refrigerator. And actually on this day, before we head to the lake, I have everyone ha get half a bagel and a piece of fruit before we head out the door. There was a party where food was being served, but we were also going to swim for a little bit beforehand. And so those bagels were already coming in handy the following day. I want to remind you again, friend, that if you would like to get going on your YouTube journey, if you have been waiting for my successful business mama, YouTuber extraordinaire course, be sure to click the first link in the description below to get the additional $30 off first launch week super discounting price and join me over at largefamilytable.com forward slash YouTube for my six week course that I have created that's going to include live calls with me, live, that's going to include live coaching calls and so mega much more. It's available now through August 7th, but the additional $30 off price option is available now through July 31st. And so here we are. Look how our bread turned out after it was out doing its proofing overnight. Yay! On the countertop. So that's our super mega big loaf <laughs> that we did. And I was able to divide it down into the four loaves that I am folding the insides in on each other, giving it a little spin, rolling it, putting a little bit of flour in my bread baskets there. What I have learned with the bread baskets is whatever I set face down in those baskets is what is going to have those pretty little creases on them that just make the bread look even more delicious. So I want to set my bread in with the little folded side up that just gives it some nice spring and tension, but I will set that face down. Then I put my little cap on top of it that came with those bread bowls. And now it is going to go in the refrigerator for another 12 to 15 hours. If I wanted to bake these on this day, I could let it sit out of the refrigerator for another three to four hours, but this longer refrigerated time puts it through a longer fermenting process that breaks down the gluten. And now we're gonna do this bigger bowl of dough there. And again, oh yes, look, we're almost a sourdough bakery. Okay, not quite, but still, what day? <laughs> and I don't mean that like making sourdough to sell. I just mean being able to make sourdough for up to 15 people to have often and also have some in my freezer, right? And so all my different bread making tools that you see me using, I also have linked over on my Amazon if you're gonna ask about those or if you're interested at all. Uh, but these are just some very simple bread making tools that I've had, but I have ordered some more of the bread baskets because those are very helpful in doing these rolls. And there you go, I'm just flipping it up, giving it a little spin, and we will continue to get it in the bread baskets. And when I run out of baskets, I just use bowls. I have used metal bowls and metal utensils with my sourdough. Some people have asked me or have shared that they've heard, you're not supposed to use metal on sourdough. I don't know. I just know that I have, and my bread has turned out beautifully. And digestive-wise, everyone in my family has handled the bread perfectly with no other side effects or symptoms, even if it has been proofed in a metal bowl or if I've used metal utensils. So you'll have to look into that. I also have glass that I use, but I do have metal more readily available. And so we get a total of eight of these loaves that beginning the following day, I start baking ahead for this coming week. And I know now that those little caps go on the top. I think the first couple times I used them, I put flour on those and put the bread down inside of it and covered it in plastic wrap. Oops, that's okay. The only way you know how to do things is to make a lot of mistakes. 
but then you have a really good base of knowledge. And I tell you, I've got a pretty good, <laughs> pretty good beginning of a base of knowledge. And so with that bread, I put the little folded side down because this is just going to rise and not have any little special creases on it. So we will get these eight loaves in the refrigerator and we will bake all of these up tomorrow. All right, and before we go to the birthday party at the lake this afternoon, I'm gonna get all these English muffins in the fridge. got two of these containers of bagels. The final count on the bagels was 41. This little one had fallen into the griddle there, but it still worked. And then, you know, many of my, I'm sorry, I said bagels, English muffins. Many of my English muffins are Stewart size. Uh, a nice, sensible person who maybe did all their English muffins this size could potentially get a lot more English muffins out of this times four batch. I believe a single batch was eight to 12. Click the link in the description and see for sure. But anyway, you know me, super mega and lots. I make gigantic everything. So we'll put these two containers in the fridge and hopefully some of them get into the freezer too. So we are still cooking these eight loaves of sourdough bread in this video, so stay tuned. Wanted to give you our count though before I forget. So we did over 150 sourdough discard pancakes. We did 32 sourdough discard bagels. We did 41, oh, I hate it when it's not an even number, haha. 41 sourdough English muffins. And then we have in process, eight loaves of the most delicious sourdough bread. And now with our bread that has been in the refrigerator, it's now the following day. And I am taking each little loaf as I'm ready with to bake it in the oven. And I am dumping it out. And we are going to do the expansion score on it. I'm not an expert at drawing pretty little designs, but I'm trying to do cute little designs on it. And I've even now advanced to, I do a heart on some of them. And my kids really like that. So coming up here, you're going to see where... I do a heart and I, you know, it bakes, you have to like try to see the heart <laughs> once it bakes, but we know it's there. We like it. I like how the little side slits um, expand out whenever I bake it also. And so now I am putting everything in the oven and we are getting these loaves cooked up. So this is actually the second gallon of yogurt. I processed the yogurt gallon that we did earlier in the video, and now it's two days later. And this is a second gallon that I have done, so we're gonna strain this. And so instead of using cheesecloth to strain my yogurt, I've been using those flour sacks that I got for my bread as well. But look, look at that beautiful sourdough. Isn't that pretty? Oh my goodness, it's just hopes and dreams, hopes and dreams. So I'm continuing throughout this day as I have loaves that are done. I am putting more loaves through my stove. And actually on this day, I have a very sick toddler. So I just had a mama pajama day and didn't get much else done other than the most important thing of being under the toddler and helping him with what he needs. But I was able to, throughout the day at different times, get these sourdough bread loaves cooked up for the family. And that was very nice. Here I am doing the little heart. You can see the heart. You can see it. So thank you, friends, for doing all of this Mega Mama marathon cooking with me, mainly over one day, and then I've shown you a little bit of follow-up over the following days. I appreciate you hanging out and watching my Mega Cooking Marathon video and looking at my beautiful bread. And there's Travis cutting it up with a bread knife for us. And that's a delicious lunch with chicken salad that we served on top of the bread as well. Again, don't forget to head over to largefamilytable.com forward slash YouTube or click your first link in the description below to get my brand new YouTuber extraordinaire course from my successful business mama course suite. YouTuber Extraordinaire is already super discounted because I am giving a fantastic 
first enrollee discount price. And right now, through July 31st, first-time enrollees for this very first week that I've ever, ever launched this course also get an additional $30 off. So click the first link in the description below. The price that you see is the price that's already discounted $30 and join now through July 31st. Mark your calendars because YouTuber Extraordinaire starts live with me on August 8th, which is my 44th birthday with our first week of video modules released, plus many bonus PDF downloads and your first of an upcoming six once a week weekly live coaching calls with me where I'm going to be going in depth on all the YouTube mama things, doing questions and answers and so much more. So click the first link in the description below and join me over now in YouTuber Extraordinaire. Again, thank you so much for watching today, friends, this huge cooking marathon. And I will talk with you in those comments below and I will see you very soon with another brand new video. Bye-bye.